sound is a great way to physically manifest something, whether that's talking, whether that's singing, chanting, playing an instrument, or just somehow creating sound. Um, a lot of times we don't think about the physicality of sound, but it is a physical thing that gets interpreted by our mind into a series of symbols that we then make sense of our world by. It's sound waves. It physically affects the air around us, it moves our eardrums, and then our brains turn those into chemical, reaction, chemical reactions and electrical pulses in our brain that we then interpret to mean something. Um, so sometimes you just need to say it. Just say it out loud, maybe once, maybe twice, maybe a lot of times. Maybe one after the other. Maybe you say it periodically, like at specific times, spread apart. And uh, also, um, you want to think about the time and place. That's another way to physically manifest something. Is there a time in which things look a certain way that brings a certain symbolism to your work? Is there a certain place that brings, you know, certain symbols or archetypes to your spell that you might want to consider? Your physical surroundings are just as important as, like, physical items that you want to include. Sometimes it's not important. Sometimes you have other items to do that with. Sometimes you do feel a need to be in a specific place. These are all things to think about in varying degrees of depth, depending on what you're going to do. Um, and the amount of structure that you use is going to vary, um, whether it's from person to person or just depending on the particular situation or spell that you're trying to do. Um, sometimes it's very impromptu. Um, you didn't plan out a whole lot aside from thinking about your intent, and you just go with it. Um, other times you might roughly sketch out a plan and then either change it or add things as you're doing the spell, because it felt right at the time and it made it better. Um, and sometimes you go through beforehand and meticulously detail every little bit minute by minute of what you're going to say and do and need. And there are times that those are appropriate. And it can take a lot of time and a lot of forethought and a lot of planning. Um, sometimes that's not fun to do, but still appropriate for the spell. So planning things out ahead of time to some degree is going to be something you should consider. What kind of spell is this? Is this a binding spell? Are you trying to bring a certain energy into your life and keep it there? Or are you trying to take a certain force that has been a bother lately and get rid of it? Are you trying to expel something? Are you trying to bring something into your life? Um, and sometimes binding spells can be used, like if you know, there's a particularly troubling entity giving you issues, whether that be a spiritual entity or a person. And you need whatever that, you know, catalyst is that's causing this trouble to just stop. Um, sometimes it's appropriate to do a binding spell to make that s uh, those certain situations not happen anymore. And that's kind of a slightly different binding spell than trying to bind a certain thing to your life, but trying to take it out, put it somewhere else, and make sure it never comes back ever again. <laughs> Sometimes you might want to do a spell um, to find the answer to something. Um, maybe you're confused about something that's going on in your life, or maybe there's something that you feel like you just don't have enough information about, and you're not having luck finding that information, either you don't have the right connections or you don't have a whole lot of research skills, you don't know where to look for it. Sometimes doing a spell to just try and find like little bits of answers and pieces can be helpful. 
Um, and once you've figured out what kind of spell you're doing, what you want it to do, uh, you kind of want to think about at least some rudimentary symbolism. Um, you don't want to just jump into a spell with no idea of how you're going to go about it. It doesn't always have to be really detailed, every little bit and piece pre-planned. There is definitely times when improvisation can help and can really get you to what you really want or get you in the right mood. Sometimes if you stress over little tiny minute you know, nitpicking, that just can be of a, a distraction and that's something that you don't need in your spell work. Um, but you do want to have some rough idea. Um, like, what kinds of symbols are you most drawn to? Uh, what kind of archetypes are you most drawn to? What resonates with you? Sometimes you might already know that. Sometimes you might realize you never gave any thought to that, especially if you're just starting out. And in that case, you probably want to do some research to figure out what those are. Um, what resonates with you? What can actually get you into a mood where you feel like you're doing something magical? Because if you don't feel like you're doing something magical, you're probably not. <laughs> um, so you want to take some time, and sometimes it might not take a lot of time. You might find something right away you might already know. Um, other times that could take months or years of research um, to come to a definitive conclusion about that. And it's okay to experiment. You can experiment with certain sets of symbols that you've never used before and see if it works. You might want to save that for smaller spells that you don't consider as important. Um, something that's not this huge big ritual that you had planned. It, you might want to just try the, those new things out with something s small and simple and it's not a huge deal if it doesn't come to pass. Um, and you also want to think then once you've found some symbols that and archetypes that you feel attached to, um, are they relevant to the spell? Do they make sense for it? If you're doing a spell about travel and you really like the goddess Bast, who's an Egyptian cat goddess of partying and, you know, music and joy, <laughs> probably not relevant. You probably want to go, if the spell's about, you know, travel, or good travel, or getting to a point in your life that you want to travel, or can travel, you probably want to go with symbols that have to do with travel. So you want to make sure that not only are those symbols do, that they resonate with you, but that they make sense for what you're doing. Um, and you also want to think um, about ways that you can physically bring those symbols into play. Sometimes you can just meditate on something. Um, personally, I'm a very visual and very tactile person. I like to have things. Some, I am an artist. I draw. I love making little pen and ink, you know, um, sketches or like drawn out symbols, sigils, runes. I just, I draw lots of stuff. It doesn't have to be elaborate. It doesn't have to be a work of art. It's usually not. But having something drawn out in pen, not in pencil, pencil smudges and erases and it's impermanent. So unless you're trying to make something impermanent, pencil's probably not a good idea. Unless it's like colored pencil, which doesn't really erase. Um, you probably want to go with something permanent, like a pen. Um, or paint. Or maybe you want to sculpt something out of clay. You want something, usually, that can stand the test of time. Um, or at least the time in which you need this to work. Um, 
figurines can help like if you have figurines that you've bought or want to buy um, as a visual reminder whether that's something part of your altar or specific to the spell itself it doesn't have to be big it could be half an inch inch in height you know um, keep it in a pocket keep it in a little tiny drawstring bag with a whatever else you're putting into the spell um, sometimes found items in nature are great sticks twigs dirt feathers bones clippings of fur from your cat or dog or I don't know maybe you have a snake and it sheds skin or you found some or you found a pretty stone or some seashells or some leaves <laughs> or pressed flowers or dried flowers or really anything at all um, I like to just collect stuff and if I find it on the ground and it doesn't look gross I pick it up because I might need it and I put it in a box or I put it somewhere else that I can keep it and find it or forget about it and then find it again because those are great moments when you find something that you forgot that you had it feels good but it can be a bit frustrating when you know that you have it and you can't remember where you put it so you want to think about that too um, sound is a great way to physically manifest something whether that's talking whether that's singing chanting playing an instrument or just somehow creating sound um, a lot of times we don't think about the physicality of sound but it is a physical thing that gets interpreted by our mind into a series of symbols that we then make sense of our world by um, it's sound waves it physically affects the air around us it moves our eardrums and then our brains turn those into chemical reaction chemical reactions and electrical pulses in our brain that we then interpret to mean something um, so sometimes you just need to say it just say it out loud maybe once maybe twice maybe a lot of times maybe one after the other maybe you say it periodically like at specific times spread apart and uh, also um, you want to think about the time and place that's another way to physically manifest something is there a time in which things look a certain way that brings a certain symbolism to your work is there a certain place that brings you know certain symbols or archetypes to your spell that you might want to consider your physical surroundings are just as important as like physical items that you want to include sometimes it's not important sometimes you have other items to do that with sometimes you do feel you need to be in a specific place sometimes it's just helpful and but you can do without it. Um, these are all things to think about in varying degrees of depth depending on what you're going to do. Um, and the amount of structure that you use is going to vary um, whether it's from person to person or just depending on the particular situation or spell that you're trying to do. Um, sometimes it's very impromptu um, you didn't plan out a whole lot aside from thinking about your intent and you just go with it. Um, other times you might roughly sketch out a plan and then either change it or add things as you're doing the spell because it felt right at the time and it made it better. Um, and sometimes you go through beforehand and meticulously detail every little bit minute by minute of what you're going to say and do and need and there are times that those are appropriate and it can take a lot of time and a lot of forethought and a lot of planning um, sometimes that's not fun to do but still appropriate for the spell um, so planning things out ahead of time to some degree is going to be something you should consider